And welcome to the Historic Lyric Theater in our hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. We're so glad everybody's tuning in. Over 500 radio stations around the world. We're coming to you from the crossroads of America's folk and bluegrass music, the gateway city to the magnificent Appalachian Mountains, where so much of this wonderful art uh, does come from. You don't have to be famous to be on wood songs. You just have to be very, very good. And what we've done is assemble a group of artists that are part, that are associated with, a, with an amazing legacy family of country music. It is, it is a dynasty that for nearly a hundred years uh, uh, has dominated the uh, history of what country music is, what it represents. They've been influential in everything from blues and bluegrass, rock and roll, to, uh, to traditional country music, and their music continues to be extremely important. But more than anything else, the story of this family is an amazing love story. It, uh, it started when, uh, when a young man, uh, A.P. Carter was uh, going door to door selling fruit trees in his uh, home area of Virginia, and he happened upon a young teenage girl named Sarah on her front porch who was selling dishes. And, and uh, he told her, he said, uh, you know, if you come with me, I'll buy every dish that you have. He was so smitten by this young girl. And they eventually married and uh, got together with the sister-in-law, Maybelle Carter, and they began to uh, sing together as families do. In the late 1920s, AP saw a flyer that uh, said that a fella in Bristol, Tennessee was paying $50 a song to uh, come out there and record, and all comers would be uh, able to get an audition. And so they drove the bumpy 30-mile drive from Bristol uh, to, from uh, their hometown of Virginia to Bristol, Tennessee. Maybell Carter was eight months pregnant at the time, and they got there, and the song that you're hearing right now is one of the, was the very first song that they recorded called Bury Me Under the Willow, Weeping Willow, and those six songs they recorded that day in Bristol, Tennessee launched what became the commercial country music uh, boom that went around the world. They are the family that began it. They are the family that started it. And we're celebrating the Carter family on this entire broadcast. To help us do that, we invited a, a very special guest. He's the son of June Carter Cash and Johnny Cash. And he is an artist and a producer and a Grammy winner in his own right, performing one of the legacy Carter family songs, Keep on the Sunny Side. Please welcome John Carter Cash. Cash to the Wood Songs, old time radio. Stay, stay. i 
sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way. If we'll keep on the sunny side of life. If we'll keep on the sunny side of life. Keep on the Sunny Side, one of the amazing songs of the Carter family. Of course, you got uh, Dave uh, Dager there on acoustic guitar and Anna Christina on the vocals, doing such a good job. With the one and only John Carter Cash. John, it's nice to have you here. Very glad to be here. Now, you, you uh, let's, let's establish uh, you as an as a artist in your own right. Uh, you are a, a Grammy Award winning producer and songwriter, artist, and you've worked with so many people. But you are the son of Johnny Cash and June Carter. Yes, sir. Uh, this is correct. Yes, and I am. So, so obviously doing a, a, a show uh, in honor of your family, it's nice that you, that you could be here. You know, I, I've really learned to embrace the heritage, and, and I appreciate, uh, you know, where I came from and where, you know, where, I, where I'm standing is because of the foundation that was laid by my grandmother and uh, the rest of the Carter family and then my father. And um, I love the music, and that's really what it's about. It's good to carry on the tradition in, in many different ways and pay respect to it the best that I can. And, you know, there's, there's so much information about the music and the awards and, and then the Grammys and, and the whole thing that, that the Carter family uh, meant commercially. They were, they were the first superstars uh -huh. of country music. Uh, but their love story is yeah. just as yeah. powerful as the music. Yes, definitely so. You know, and it is a, a unique tale. You know, A.P. Carter was searching songs. I mean, that's really what it was about. And I know while he was, you know, climbing those mountains and bringing uh, the, the fruit trees across to the folks up and down, he was looking for songs. He was knocking on front porches. And, you know, he was asking for music. And he saw that light and beauty in Sarah's eye. And, of course, that ignited a flame that has lasted uh, musically with us uh, far past their lives. Well, we, we mentioned earlier that uh, he saw this poster uh, yep. of a, a flyer inviting people to come uh, audition uh -huh. in Bristol, Tennessee, yeah. and uh, he and uh, Sarah and uh, Maybell, who was pregnant yeah. at the she time. Had, uh, yeah, pregnant with my aunt um, Helen, actually, uh, then bouncing down that road between Hilton's, Virginia, Macy Springs proper, um, to Bristol. They had, uh, what, a couple of flat tires, I do believe, en route, uh, but they persisted. They hung in there. I think it probably took them quite a few hours to get... What's it, 26 miles? And it's, it's not like there's a it's gas station. Far. There's not like a gas station every five miles. No, sir, no, like sir. And, and the roads were quite a bit different back then. Right. But they got there with the baby in uh, Maybell's belly and uh, sat down and performed some wonderful music that was recorded that well, day. Well, and they barely got there in time. I mean, yeah. they, they were almost yeah. too late for the whole session. That's how uh, close this came to not happening. Yep. Yeah. And also, of course, uh, Jimmy Rogers recorded right around the same time. It was quite a historical happening there in Bristol, Tennessee in 1927, August. Yeah, it definitely, you know, and that was, they consider that to be the big bang of country music. And between the Bristol sessions and uh, the XERA radio station sessions, uh, about 10 years later, 10 or 11, 12 years later, um, country music was uh, set to expand itself into the world. Well, it was interesting. Uh, they did the uh, they did the uh, Bristol sessions, mm -hmm. and AP was not even aware that they released the record. Uh -huh. And it got lo, lo and behold, it, the thing sold three hundred thousand copies. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it shocked everybody, even the the little record company that put it out. They did not expect yeah. that kind of commercial success from them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. It was right before the Great Depression hit, and, and and you know another interesting thing is that the Carter family kept making music through the Great Depression, through uh, between 1927 and 1941. Uh, they recorded over 300 songs, you know, and uh, there were a lot of bands that weren't able to do it. But that's the thing about music; it helped people through that time period, and it was so supportive. And people were gaining identity from this music and hearing it for the first time. Well, you you performed "Keep on the Sunny Side," and they released that right before the uh, the the stock market crashed uh -huh. and uh, that became the big big song of the depression era yeah. and and in their personal life AP and Sarah were not doing that well because mm -hmm. AP saw a lot of opportunity in the music which kept him away a lot and they made Sarah very very lonely very yeah. unhappy and their marriage was not solid as much as he loved his wife and they fell in love as young yeah. people yeah. it didn't work out for them well they've been married quite a few years when they made those first recordings you know, and so um, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm sure they were already, you know, in some struggles at that time, you know, when they uh, did their first recordings. But the music unified, and the vision that they had remained, you know, and it remained even after they split up as husband and wife. They continued to make music together. Well, you're here making music uh, in honor of this uh, great legacy family that you are a very major part of, and uh, Anna Christina is going to sing lead on this very next uh, song. This is one of the most popular songs of the Carter family. It's called Wildwood Flower. It's John Carter Cash on the Woods songs. Old time here. Yeah. Christine on lead vocal with John Carter Cash, son of uh, June Carter and the great Johnny Cash. We're so glad that they're here. If you want to revisit this broadcast, we encourage you to go online, woodsongs.com, click on the archive page. This is known, show number 300, uh, 832, and you can uh, re-listen to uh, John Carter Cash, as well as the next artist who's third generation member of the Carter family and uh, grandson of AP and uh, Sarah uh, Carter himself, and uh, he has got a quite a story to tell himself, so we're glad that this member of the Carter family could be with us. But one of the songs that uh, they collected, you're going to sing for us right now with your group. It's uh, called Cyclone of Rye Cove, a famous Carter family song. It's Mr. Dale Jett on the Wood Songs, Old Time Radio. <laughs> Listen today and the story I'll tell That was good and bad cyclone that came this way Through a schoolhouse way Right go, 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 right go Sound. 
Third generation member of the Legacy Carter family, Mr. Dale Jett. We are also here with John Carter Cash talking about his family and their, the songs of the amazing uh, Carter family and what they meant to uh, country music. We've got more special guests, plus this week's Wood Songs kid. Wait till you meet her, 14 years old. We will be back with more right after this. This is Roseanne Cash, and you are exploring the world of grassroots music with folk singer Michael Jonathan on the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour. And thank you, Roseanne. We are celebrating the music of Roseanne Cash's family. We are here with the great John Carter Cash, Dale Jett, more wonderful artists introduced to you uh, shortly. We're broadcasting worldwide from Australia to Ireland, New Zealand to New York, Yuma, Arizona to the Yukon and Northern Canada, over 500 radio stations. We're also broadcasting on American Forces Radio Network. That puts this broadcast on the air in 173 nations, plus every single military base in the world, every single U.S. naval ship in the world, every Coast Guard vessel sailing in North America on the radio and we want to say hello to all the men and women out there that especially these days very difficult job for them and their families we're also uh, uh, on the uh, on television coast to coast over 96 million homes across the United States gets to watch the show that you're hearing on the radio and this is the part of the broadcast that I look forward to every single week because we love to celebrate the music of kids this this music is so family and community oriented that we decided a long time ago that this time of every broadcast we would invite a youngster from somewhere in North America to come and simply sing one song uh, 
uh, on the same stage, on the same broadcast as seasoned touring uh, performers. And we found a wonderful young girl from uh, Tennessee. Let's say hello to Jaylee Roberts. She's 14 years old. Hello, Jaylee. You look so lovely, and, and you've been around music all your life, haven't you? Yes, sir, I have. Uh, and, and your dad is here with you. He plays the mandolin. And your dad is with a very important bluegrass band. What's the name of the band that he's with? He's in the band called the Graskels. The Graskels, yeah. So. so you get to hear all kinds of good music, don't you? Yes, sir. Uh, now, you're here with a, with a very nice guitar. How, you're 14 now. How, how old were you when you started playing the guitar? When I started playing the guitar, I was about eight years old, but I really started getting serious about it uh, about a year back. And it must be very nice for you as a, as, a, as a young daughter to be able to play music on stages with, with your dad. I mean, what it a is. rare opportunity that is for you, right? Mm -hmm. So That's you guys are going to sing a Carter family song for us, since this is the show you're hearing. You selected a very special song. What is it? Storms Around the Ocean. She's 14 years old from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Jay Lee Roberts and Storm on the Ocean. I'm going away to leave you, love I'm going away for a while But I'll return to see you sometime If I go 10,000 miles The storms are on the ocean The heavens may cease to be She's 14 years old from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Jay Lee Roberts, what a good job singing the uh, Storm on the Ocean by the Carter family. If you have a youngster that you think belongs on our stage, we would love to hear from you about them. Simply send us a, a link to a YouTube clip. We'd love to hear them and, uh, and perhaps feature them on our, our broadcast. My email address is very, very simple. It's uh, michael at Woodsongs. Dot com. We are celebrating the legacy music of the Carter family, the first superstars of country music, and the uh, pioneering family that brought these wonderful songs to uh, people all over the world. Their music continues to be very, very important and vital. And as we continue our celebration, we have a wonderful trio, very dear friends of ours, who perform often at a place called Carter Fold, a location, a venue that celebrates the, uh, the history of the Carter family. 
they're going to do a tune called Sweet Fern. Please welcome Al, Alice, and Ruth to the Wood Songs, Old Time Radio. <laughs> Fern, Song of the Carter Family, Al, Alice, and Ruth, and special guest Sam Cleaves on the uh, banjo. Good job, Sam. So let's talk to uh, Ruth McLean uh, uh, Smith uh, for a second here. Now, the music of the Carter Family, you as a young girl uh, growing up with a wonderful uh, bluegrass band, the McLean Family Band. Carter family songs must have been very important, especially the to The Carter family music and the Carter family themselves have been very important to us. Uh, we played at, when, when um, A.P. Carter's general store uh, was made into a little music area. We went and played there before they started the big barn at the Carter family fold in Macy Springs, Well, tell us about the Carter. Tell us about the Carter family fold because you perform there quite often. Oh yes, Macy Springs, Virginia. It's like a pilgrimage. Uh, people that that care about traditional music for sure should go to the Carter family fold every Saturday night. They've continued a very strong tradition of having traditional music. And um, it's a beautiful venue. There. It's a gorgeous venue. Absolutely. And and uh, Rita 
continues, another one of Jeanette's kids, uh, continues having the, uh, having the music there every Saturday night, and our brother is on the board there and mm -hmm. continues helping. Um, it's so, it's, it was one of the most important um, places that we played uh, for our father also, and for in his honor, we've continued to play there every year. Uh, I guess since the since the early 70s. Well, and, and in the spirit of honoring uh, others, uh, uh, of course, AP married Sarah, and they went on tour with, with Maybell, and that became the Carter family music. When Sarah passed away by her request, you were one of the ones that uh, performed at her funeral. We did. Sarah asked us to sing. Uh, Sarah said that um, that our family reminded her of her family singing together, and and uh, we, we appreciate the family so much. And also what they did for country music. Uh, Johnny Cash has been quoted as saying that the Bristol Sessions were the most important thing that happened in country music history. Um, and not only it was the collecting and writing and recording of these uh, songs, but also what they did with their instruments with some of the old songs, putting them with guitar chords. And so that kind of changed uh, the chord structure the, the, and timing uh, forever. And it made a difference in what happened with country music. Well, and Mother Mabel especially, her guitar style became, uh, I mean, Al is certainly doing that Carter, what they call the Carter scratch, right? It's Yeah, very simplified version. But yeah, she just was so influential in the whole world country music with that very effective and beautiful guitar style. That well, she was doing sort of like the bass runs and the rhythm yeah. at the same time, the melody and, yeah. and the, right? melody and the rhythm at the same time, making the guitar the whole instrument, that's all you need. Right, it, it, became, it became a pioneering uh, part of the guitar playing world for, for, for many people. Well, let's get back into this music and you can demonstrate it uh, some for us, uh, Al. It's Al, Alice, and Ruth, special guest Sam Gleaves. This is a tune from the Carter family called Gospel Ship on the Wood Songs, old time radio. <laughs> When I'm sailing through the air I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a trip on that old gospel ship I'm sailing far beyond the sky I'm gonna shout and sing until the heavens ring When I bid this world Al, Al, 
Alice and Ruth, Gospel Ship, one of the songs of the Carter family. There was a wonderful love story that was uh, the Carter family, and uh, Maybelle Carter, of course, begat June Carter, and as a young boy in Arkansas, a little kid named Johnny Cash heard this voice on the uh, radio, and he just knew someday he was going to meet that girl, and backstage at the Grand Ole Opry many, many years later, he finally met, Johnny Cash finally met uh, June Carter in person and told her that night that someday he was going to marry yeah. her. And performing one of the songs that June Carter wrote is uh, her son, John Carter Cash. This is called A Ring of Fire on the Wood Songs, Old Time Radio. Song of June Carter for Johnny, performed by their son, John Carter Cash. There's, there's so much to the story of the, this family that it cannot be contained in a one hour like this, even though we're doing songs and stuff. I mean, don't you agree there's so much? Yes, you know, in 1939, the Carter family went to Del Rio, Texas. Where they were working across the border at XERA, and they were broadcasting 500,000 watts of signal from down there. And so, of course, the legal limit now in broadcast is 100,000 watts. My mother was there. She was 10 years old in 1939. She, she said the signal was so powerful you could hear it on your dental fillings. <laughs> so what was happening was the Carter family was being broadcast on this uh, uh, Mexican border station as far north almost as Newfoundland, almost down to South America. People were picking up the Carter family radio hour all the way up in Seattle. Wow. So that, you know, therefore, country music was being heard in the living rooms, and that was the Carter family. And, of course, one of the people that was listening to the Carter family in 1939 would have been my father, John R. Cash. And it was, you know, his love for young Junie Carter that inspired him to walk up, walk up to her backstage at the Ryman Auditorium and say, I'm going to marry you someday. <laughs> Well, your dad was very persistent, though, you have to agree. Yeah, he, yeah, he stuck with it. And, and they were both uh, in relationships with other people at the time. They were both married at the time. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to be <laughs> you delicate. You call it a relationship. <laughs> I was trying to be delicate here. But, yeah, but yeah, now, yeah. 
now that's that's part of, I mean the the Carter family I mean AP you know and Sarah were married and and yeah. the, the, you know they were not exactly the Waltons I mean even though they had this public yeah. presentation of being a well, family what, what they, we have for the Carter family is a foundation yeah. you know what I'm saying and it was carried on by individuals like my mother June Carter who sang the Carter family songs for tens of thousands of people a year you know through uh, throughout her entire life the folks like uh, like uh, Jeanette Carter, who ran the Carter Fold for all those years, Dale Jett, Sister Rita, people that are carrying the torch of the music. And it's not only the family now, of course, it's people all around the world that appreciate and love the Carter family music. And yet AP never really saw that success on his own because after the, after the Carter family broke up, I mean, uh, you know, he kind of, he was lonely. He was a very yeah. sad, lonely man. He, he kind of retired into running a little general store. Uh, you know, the Carter family uh, royalties mattered, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars a year at the time, where yeah. today they're the most valuable catalog of all country music, just yes, about, sir. right? Yes, and, yeah, yeah. And, and yet, and yet, you know, he didn't, he went through all that effort because he believed in the music so much, but he did not see it. He never saw it, no, no. He passed away uh, before the big resurgence of folk music in the late 1960s. A.P. A. Carter wasn't there to witness, to see the flowering of this beautiful tree that has become uh, the, you know, the, the carrying of the legacy. And well, somebody carry the torch. What one of the that? biggest, most beautiful flowers is the song that we're about to invite everybody on stage to sing. And the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band um, uh, pulled this song out uh, during one of their uh, legendary recording sessions. And this has become the great staple song of the Carter family. We owe so much to them. This is a John Carter Cash and everybody else, uh, Dale Jett and Al Alice and Ruth, the entire bunch. They're going to sing this legacy song. It's called Will the Circle Be Unbroken on the Woods Song? I was standing by my window on one cold and cloudy day when I saw that earth come rolling for to carry my mother away. Will the circle Wasn't it great having John Carter Cash on our show? The amazing Dale Jett, third generation Carter family. Al, Alice, and Ruth. And this week's Wood Songs kid, Jaylee Roberts, 14 years old from 
Murfreesboro, Tennessee. We're celebrating the music, the legacy, the people that were the Carter family, the first superstars of country music, the people that were responsible for bringing so much of this wonderful music to us. And like we were talking with John Carter, uh, Cash, the AP, the, the, the founding father of all of this, never even got to see the success of what he worked so, so hard to, uh, to build. He, he uh, ended up uh, passing away in 1960, you know, and like Mozart, Art, who was not appreciated when he passed away, who died a pauper's death and put in a pauper's grave. AP passed away and the local newspaper didn't even run an obituary. They were not even aware of the amazing accomplishment that this man behind the counter at this little general store had accomplished. Music is so powerful that it supersedes even the people who make it. And that's why family music is so important. Music with you and your family, like the Carter family did, like John Carter does with, Cashwood does with his family, and Al, Alice, and, and Ruth, they are a family as well, and our Woodsong's kids are part of families. Family music supersedes everything else about the music business. It's the love transaction that AP was most interested in by keeping this music and his family together. In his case, it didn't work, but for you, it can. And I want to remind you of something that, that uh, Maya Angelou said. She said, music is a refuge. I could crawl into the space between the notes and curl my back to its loneliness. A.P. Carter was very, very much alone in the global success of his work and the music that he found. Give a little bit of that to your family. It's a wonderful, wonderful gift. My name is Michael Jonathan. I'm a folk singer. I am a song farmer, and we'll see you next week on the Woodsongs Old Time Radio.